Though I had little suspected it as I caught sight of him ahead, he was destined by a kind of providence to make more entertaining talk for me in half an hour morning, than most people provide in a lifetime. Yeah, I happen to know the time. <laughs> Yes, I was first to put stick or stone on Wartlebury Common yonder. Fifteen years ago, I built my own wood cottage there, and now I'm rebuilding it of good sorry stone. Do you mean you're building it yourself? With your own hands, no one to help you? Not so much as to carry a pail of water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my own contractor, my own carpenter, and my own bricklayer. And I shall be 67 come Michaelmas. There was pride in his voice. Pardonable pride, I thought. For who of us would not be proud to be able to build their own house from floor to chimney? 67. Now, a man can do and see a great deal in that time. Oh, yes. I've been about a great deal and seen as much of the world as there is to see and sailed as far as ship could take me. Indeed. You were a sailor too. 22,000 miles a sea. Yes. Vancouver's about as far as any vessel need want to go. And then I caught seals off the coast of Labrador and walked my way through the blackberry fields at the back of the White Mountains. Vancouver. Labrador. The White Mountains. The very names casually mentioned on a Surrey Heath. Strange to think that the shabby little man at my side had them all fast-locked, pictures upon pictures in his brain, and as we were talking, was back again in goodness knows what remote latitude. And then there was a policeman. Twenty-one years a policeman. I don't know where I found the time to have the children. All twelve of them. But they're mostly away now, and... For the most part, I can live off my pension. Twelve children? Yep. Oh. Yeah, there's Molly, Daisy, Bethany, Thomas at home. This man had the independent air of a man who could honestly say to himself that, with few advantages from fortune, having had, so to speak, to work his passage across those 22,000 miles and those 67 years, had made a thoroughly creditable job of his life. Oh, 22,000 miles a sea. 12 children. 67. And he builds his own cottage. Ah, the inn is all very well in its own way, but it swallows time. My wife and I, we have our own pin at home, and when I'm feeling tired, <laughs> I just draw myself a glass and smoke a pipe. It saves time, coming and going, and drinking first with this one and then with the other. Poor gentleman, I shouldn't like to have the troubles he's had on my shoulders. Indeed? Well, you see, sir, he married an actress. And a noble lady, too, she was. A fine, dashing, merry lady as ever you saw. All went well for a while, 
And then it got whispered about that she and the village schoolmaster were meeting each other at nights in the meadow bottom at the end of her own bar. It lies down that lane. I could take you to the very place. The schoolmaster was a noble-looking man, too. A fine devil me care blade of a fellow. With a, a turn for the poultry, they said. and a merry man too, and very much in request for a song at the end of an evening. Oh, many's the night I've heard the windows rattling with the good company gathered round him. Sam, give us a song. Give us a song, come on. they come to know each other? Well, of course, no one can say how these things come about. She was the lady of the manor and the patroness of his school. And then, as I say, he was a very noble-looking man and probably took her fancy. And, sir, when some women set their hearts on a man, there's nothing will stop them. Have him they will. Whatever happens. We can't help it, poor things. It's, it's just a freak of nature. And how was it found out? Well, one of Sir William's keepers turned spy on them. And he put it about all over that he'd seen them on moonlit nights, sitting together in the dingle, drinking champagne and laughing and talking as, as merry as you please. Him and the wife of Sir William. No. Yeah, and the schoolmaster. It's true. See that green lane? It was along there he used to go of a night to meet her after everyone was in bed. And when it all came out, there was a regular cart load of bottles found at the foot of an old tree where they used to meet. Sir William had them all broken up but the pieces are there, to this day. Yes, Sir William took it very hard. He hasn't been the same man since. 
I am afraid that my imagination was more occupied with that picture of the two lovers, making merry together in the moonlit well, dingle. Well, best beginning on home. I hope you enjoyed passing through our way. I'm very glad I did. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I confess that I retraced the lover's steps. I rambled up that green lane, along which the romantic schoolmaster used to steal in the moonlight to the warm arms of his love. How eagerly he had trodden the very turf I was treading. We never know at what moment we are treading sacred earth. But for that old man, I had passed along this path without a thrill. And now I stood before the very tree where they had so often and so wildly met. And it was all gone, quite gone away forever. The hours that had seemed so real. The kisses that had seemed like to last forever. The vows. The tears. All now as if they had never been. Gone on the four winds, lost in the abysses of time and space. And to think of all the thousands and thousands of lovers who have loved no less wildly and tenderly, made sweet these lanes with their vows, made green these meadows with their feet. And they too, all gone. Their bright eyes fallen to dust, their sweet voices forever put to silence. To which I would add, for the benefit of the profane, that I searched in vain for those broken bottles. Long, long ago, long, long ago. 